We live! <laughs> Welcome to Magley Moment. I am Jennifer Magley and of Magley Mass Media. If you can't tell, love my name. Trying to get myself out there with my own branding. And with me today, we have the impeccable Indianapolis icon, Faith Blackwell of Faith Blackwell Photography. She's an artist. She is the moment. Her stuff is everywhere and her experience is vast. Welcome to Magley Moment, Faith. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm thrilled I see your gorgeous art back there. I mean, I, let's just get right into the art. Like, tell me all the things about, is this pop? Like, how are you using photography to, to showcase and express how you're, how you're feeling as an artist? Well, the things that you're seeing behind me, I'll do a little lean in, lean out, um, are like my latest projects. I had a desire, a passion to start doing some um, projects that were based on Black female, the way we wear our hair. Mm. So that's like my newest series coming up. So I have like the French braids, the locks, the Bantu knots. So doing some creative things behind that. Okay, so this is a little controversial, like right out the get, but the Crown Act is a really big deal right now in our culture. And that's something that Dove is backing uh, so that so that women can wear their hair in different styles, specifically Black women. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to showcase these this whole diversity of hairstyles that are found within our culture? It means everything to me. I think the more you see it, the more you understand. And it's nothing that's, you know, taboo or anything. I mean, it's, it's normal. It's regular to us. So yes. just like the more you see it, the more you're like, oh, OK, that's interesting. But then also like black women have come up to me and said they appreciate the fact that I'm doing this art, that people they're seeing it around the city and it's being embraced. And it's just like showing so much power in our in our community definitely here in indianapolis i mean i remember seeing your work i think it was at Saks. i don't know if it was the first time before i was featured you i was so honored that you featured me and thinking like wow like indianapolis we're progressive and i think that's interesting that one person can help shape that perception from the outside because i'm not from this city Mm -hmm. Are you from Indianapolis? Tell us a little bit about like your story. I'm originally from Northwest Indiana. So I'm from East Chicago. If you know that area, it's like East Chicago, Gary Hammond, like we're like 30 minutes away from Chicago. So we've grown up more with Chicago um, in our nature than like Indiana, Indianapolis, since we're so close to the, to the lake and everything. And when you came to Indy, did you notice that there wasn't the type of work that you were doing or like how, what was the journey to creating like from where you started to where you are today? I think you froze there for a second. What was well, when I journey? came to Indy, I came out. My, my um, journey was I went to um, College at Purdue, I had went to business, um, went back home, worked for a couple of years. I came here and I started working. So I was just like in the workforce, just like everybody else here. I didn't do a lot of like going to art shows and different things like that. I didn't know we had those things go coming up, just like a lot of people don't know about like the Stutz building that I'm in, which is housed with a lot of artists and businesses. But once I started um, going into the arts, I like went into the Stutz building, I was noticing there was like a lack of diversity in a lot of the artwork and artists like where I am and around and surrounding me. So just like starting to network with different people and um, gaining those experiences. Cause when I first started, it was photography. So I started straight photography, doing um, corporate headshots, some events, then down the line, I settled on my niche, which was corporate headshots in the mix of like my 10, 12 year journey. I started doing artwork and then I wanted to do artwork of things that I didn't see. Mm. So and being like in the Stutz building, you get to know different artists and are exposed to different mediums. So like being able to collaborate and talk and like talk things out is very helpful in this community. 
Definitely. So this LinkedIn platform is, is all career leadership for better or for worse. I find that there's a lot of content on folks that are transitioning, right? Transition is kind of like that key theme. How did you transition from like a full-time nine to five to like what you're doing today, or maybe even that next step, which was headshots? Like what, what was that journey like for you? Well, when I, when I was doing my nine to five, I started getting burned out. I was there for 10 years, around year seven or eight. I was feeling like, yeah, this isn't for me. Um, I know that I wasn't going to stay on this journey for much longer. So I, I picked up a camera and just fell in love with it. It was like an instant love connection for me um, and the camera. So when I went to, um, when I started like thinking about my next steps, I was mar I'm married at the time. So I talked to my husband. I was like, yeah, this isn't going to be what I'm going to do. I'm going to start planning like my exit strategy. Mm. I know I want to be there for like 10 years to be vested and all that good stuff. So once I picked up the camera, I started taking classes. I started gaining a little bit of, you know, some clients here and there, just like trying to build up that portfolio and paying off bills along the way. So when I, because I know that, you know, when you first start a business, you're going to be in the red for like two or three years. So oh. you need to, like, so I was going to just yes, trying to make that transition as easy as I could. So when you were building out and like scaling your business, was this a side hustle for you and then you transitioned into it or was there a moment that you just because a lot of people that I talked to are like, I just want to quit my job and go for it. And I'm always like, Skirt! you know, like you got to be your own VC. You got to be your own investor sometimes. Uh, I mean, I know folks believe in not having a plan B, but I think they probably created that that safety net first mm -hmm. so what, for you. Was it a side hustle and then a, and then a full time transition? Yeah, it was a side hustle for like a couple of years and then a full time transition. Um, yeah, because once, you know, you have to do something, it's like it's going to be a hustle. Once I quit, I was like, OK, that's it. I took a year to just like, you know, establish a business. And then I moved into the studs the year after that. And then I was uh -huh. just like doing anything and everything until I, you know, was like, OK, I can't do that anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. So I started like weeding out things I didn't want to do and focusing on things I wanted to do. Definitely. Okay. So when did you know it was the moment that you're like, mic drop, I'm out of here, corporate, bye-bye, time for me to do my own thing. Like what, what was that moment for you? I mean, I knew when I was um, doing that, like year eight, I knew that things were going on in the economy. Our businesses were changing and I didn't want to like grow with that business. I had no mm. desire to, you know, I was like plateaued out. So I'm like, yeah, this is a for me. I'm out. Um, I knew and that and making that decision and I set a date for like when I was going to go. So that like alleviated a lot of stress. So once I set that date, I was like a weight was lifted off of me and I was just like ready to go. I love that. It's kind of like an expir like an expiration date, like when the mm -hmm. bill goes <laughs> What do you think it is that you know, stops a lot of people from setting that expiration date and going for their dream? Like if you had to guess. I mean, it's just all about the fear of unknowing. Um, it's always going to be there, but you have to kind of sort of embrace it and you know that things will get better. So I'm like, I take, I tell everybody, I, I'm afraid every little step that I take, but it doesn't stop me from taking it because you'll look back and be like, oh, that wasn't so bad and just keep going. Tell me about some of your wins, like along the way. Like, what has been? What are some highlights in your career now as a as a full time creator, a full time artist, photographer? When you look back, what sticks out for you? Some of my wins, I think, just being in different places and spaces. Like when I met you, we were doing the sax thing. So just like having sax recognized artists and having us in their space. Um, also, uh, work in bottle works that's just like, gonna live on forever. When I did that that project, when they wanted to focus on some of the people who worked on the building and have those images blown up to like six feet and they're like on display on the second and third floor for like ever. So seeing your stuff like there, 
in a place, you know, of, you know, high standards and that will be there so everyone else can see it and enjoy it is like some of my biggest wins. And also like being on the side of a building at Butter, that's just like was an amazing win as, as well. So for folks that don't live here in Indianapolis, tell us what the Bottle Works is and what Bottle Works is. Bottle Works, I think it's like ranked uh, one of the number one hotels to stay at now in the country. Um, it was the old Coca-Cola bottling plant, which was like originally here. Um, and then they restored it. It turned into a beautiful hotel. There's restaurants there. It's a whole district now with restaurants and entertainment, um, a food hall. So, yeah. And Gang Gang is a really a game changing force for culture and art. It's local here in Indianapolis, at least Gang Gang Indianapolis. They've been in New York Times, but it's an art fair where artists receive an art show where they're receiving 100% every single dollar of purchases. And you are on the side of the Stutz building promoting this, I mean, iconic. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to go ahead and give you your flowers, <laughs> give you your clapperdoos now. Um, but, you know, recently I was watching your social media and you have a wonderful presence. Like if you're not following Faith, you have to check her out on Instagram and on LinkedIn. And you shared this tip of how you get your artwork into mm -hmm. unique spaces and places. And, you know, for creative folks that are wondering, how do I get myself out there? What was the tip? The tip was to just ask. I love that. That was it. That was it. <laughs> okay. And when you say ask, it's like, do you walk in? Do you email? Like, how do you get in touch with these folks? I mean, I would establish a relationship with people, especially if it's somewhere. I wouldn't just like pick randomly where your work would never be, where it's not like it doesn't fit. Make sure your your work fits where it will be in. Because there are some places that I've been into and I'm like, because I do a lot of pop art. So I look for that when I am, you know, looking for places and spaces to ask people. Um, but yeah, just walk in, establish a relationship with them, follow them, see what their work is, see if they're accepting new artists. Because some people yeah. are accepting new artists. They have like, if you're going into a gallery, there's jury shows all the time. So just like, do a call to artists, check them out, ask questions. But yeah, there's it's only one one real thing to do is just ask them. I love it. Like, and I think that that's something that a lot of people are afraid of because they feel like the no and the rejection is because it's your art, right? It's like mm -hmm. your creation. Some would say it's your baby. So mm -hmm. to put it out there, like, was that something you had to get over, or have you always had the courage? to go in and ask for what you want. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I had to gather that, gather that strength. Yeah, I have to, um, like, and it's, it's gotten easier over time. And I've always heard the phrase, if you're not getting enough no's, you're not doing anything. So mm -hmm. just, like, just keep gathering your no's because those yeses will come. That, yeah, that's, that's really good insight. Um, what's next? Like, what is on the dream or the vision board or the to-do list for you with, with your business? Well, just more of, I want to get more work outside of Indianapolis. So hotels, the things I'm doing now, hotels, galleries, uh -huh. uh, different museum shops. I have uh, some work in the museum here. So just like different shops in the city, just like expanding that reach a little bit more. Outside of Indianapolis, what cities are you, are you targeting? Uh, Chicago, the big one, Chicago, LA, New York those kind of spaces. I've heard some people mention like New Orleans to me and I do like a couple of places that are in New Orleans. So just like a lot of artsy communities and where, well, well, where people appreciate art and are willing to, you know, spend the money to pay artists. Definitely. And I could see your work, you know, partnering with some magazines and, and products that are celebrating black hair because it is, it's such a beautiful moment to be able to embrace all styles, natural, not natural, braided. So it's just a, it's a wonder. I'm so glad to be alive during this time, speaking, <laughs> speaking frankly. Um, but you know, it's funny kind of going back to hair. To this day, I still have young women and some women that are, you know, in their first or second role. And they're like, 
how should I wear my hair for an interview? Should I straighten it out? Should I wear a wig or should I wear my hair natural? Was that ever part of your journey when you were an employee? Not really, because I did have my hair like relaxed, like back in the day. It was just um, not until it's been some years that I've been natural, but I've had friends who are like doctors in the medical industry mm. who have worn their natural. But when interview time came, they had they straightened it because, you know, that was and this was like this was some years ago, too. So this was like, you know, what we had to do just to, you know, get in the door. So, yes. but yeah. But not too much. I haven't heard too much about it lately. That's what I feel like. I feel like I'm still hearing some folks say, like, I'm wearing my hair straighter uh, for the interviews. But once I get the role mm -hmm. and I'm changing it. And then other people feel like, you know, if I wear my hair natural and they can't accept me for me, right. this is kind of my shibboleth. This is my litmus test to see right. are you on my level. Can you understand my own personal brand and where I'm at? Mm -hmm. How does hair play into your day to day as a as an owner? It does it affect your world, or is it not a thing anymore now that you are doing your own thing? Right now, people know me for my hair, so ah! if they, see, they see my hair, they're like, "Oh, that's Faith." So they will spot me because of my hair. So it's my it's it's my thing. So it's your trademark look now. <laughs> it's my, it's my, my hair is. So I'm like, I love my hair. So yeah, we've gone through so much you know, like not loving ourselves. This is like mm. definitely one part of me that I do love. I love my hair. Oh, well, I think it's beautiful. We have uh, Stephanie Daly. Hey, Stephanie. She said that Cleveland would be cool uh, Ooh, as a for so our team. Uh, so I'll definitely have to have to check that out. So where can folks follow you? Where can folks find you? Do you have more than one studio? I do. I do. I have uh, my studio here at the Stutz building, which is like my photography base. And then I have I share a space with two other artists at, in Broad Ripple. It's called Studio C Arts Collective. And yeah, that's with uh, Greta Kruger and Ann Emerson Wishard. And we are like a collective there. If anyone familiar with the Broad Ripple area it is right across the Monon Trail from Mama Corolla's. So, yes. Uh, do you go to Mama Corolla's a lot because you're right there? I do not, but it smells wonderful there. <laughs> you step outside and can smell the garlic just in the air. Yes. Well, if there's one thing we have in Indiana. Well, there's two things. We have some beautiful art and we have a lot of food. We have mm -hmm. some delicious mm -hmm. dinner options. All right. Well, as we wrap it up, what tips do you have for people that are looking to transition into having their own business or following their full-time passion? Uh, some tips, it's just like have a game plan as much as you can. Cause some people will just like be fed up and just like be out, but think of things that you want to do and start building your clientele, start telling friends that you have interest in this. Cause a lot of people that I know will have their job, but also do like contract work. So just keep that, keep that in people's forethought so they can, you know, be on the lookout for you should a position come up or should there be that big clientele that you want to pursue? Love it. And also if anyone's corporate gifting, I think that you've got some wonderful offerings coming up here for the holiday season. If, if you're thinking, gosh, what can I give my employees that's original, that's local? I'm clearly a fan of yours, so I will put that out there. Reach out to Faith. And you can also visit her website at faithblackwell.smugmug.com. Faith, I have been admiring you for the longest, have been honored by you through your photography and being featured. You photographed my family for our holiday cards, and I'm just so grateful to have you in my life. So thank you for coming on Magley Moment Live thank today. You. I'm just thrilled. And we've also been live on YouTube. So <laughs> if you are feeling like, ah, LinkedIn isn't my spot, you can, you can watch this uh, live on YouTube moving forward. But I will see you soon, Faith, and thank you so much. Thank you. All right, bye, everyone. Bye.